Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by author Arden Coots, who writes queer romance suspense novels about finding yourself and finding love in your 30s and 40s. So we're going to be talking to Arden about writing, the writing process, and everything that is going to be coming up in the future for Arden. So Arden, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, As mentioned, my name is Arden. I um, am an author. I started writing when I was eight or nine, started with poetry. Uh, I was a very sad child (laughs) and used poetry to kind of get my feelings out. Uh, growing up in rural Nebraska didn't give me a lot to do. So I wrote and read a lot. And that kind of fostered my love for books. And I wrote them to kind of entertain myself. And it kind of grew from there. I think I always wanted to be a writer on some level. And it took me until about 30 two, I think, to really start looking into it and, and to to dig into it and make it a reality. So I've, I've kind of uh, done some odd jobs uh, until then. I was an archaeologist for a while, um, did the corporate six-figure job thing in D.C. for a bit, and am now finally focused on the writing. So I'm uh, very excited to finally be uh, doing something that I love. So speaking of growing up in rural Nebraska, I'm in Kansas. So what part of Nebraska did you grow up in? Very far north central, like almost in South Dakota, just town of about 600 to 1,000 people, you know, in a good year. <laughs> and yeah, cows and corn, That that was about it. There you go. <laughs> I'm in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we got like 500,000 people here. So so tell us about, you know, why you decided to write uh, queer romance novels. Yeah, I think it started again, when I was younger, and I didn't realize I was doing it, but I would see a movie or read a book that I loved, and I would essentially write fan fiction about that story, but I would make the characters queer. I would write female characters into where there were male characters, because I wanted to see female identifying characters as heroes because you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s a lot of action movies only featured men saving women and i wanted to see someone like myself in those lead roles saving people and being the hero so i kind of started writing queer action and queer romance when i was in my teens i guess and kind of forgot about it again until I hit my 30s. And then I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this again. And I had an idea for a story about a female genderqueer bouncer, um, uses she, they pronouns, that worked at a club that falls in love with an ER doctor. So a little bit of... Um, uh, Roadhouse, I guess, <laughs> to to uh, if folks remember that movie, the original, or I guess the remake, but um, it kind of came from that. And again, I really just wanted to feature queer characters in these lead heroic roles because I don't feel like they're 
there's a lot of representation in that kind of action mystery thriller genre when it comes to um, the LGBTQ community. Okay. What, what keeps you motivated to still keep writing? Um, I think for me, it's the joy that my books bring other people. It's, it's one of the things I love the most is being to being able to enjoy other people's enjoyment, if that makes sense. Um, I love hearing how it's the first book that people have read that have a gender fluid character or that um, it's the first queer book that they've read that has characters in their thirties and forties. And that really motivates me to keep going. It really motivates me to, it lets me know that I'm on the right track, I guess, but I'm also just, I have, I'm full of stories and I want to get them out and I want to share them and I really would love to build a community around um, my books that is focused on motivating and encouraging the the queer community to to do what they love. So sticking on that motivational topic, who, who are your influences? Who, who influences you to write, whether popular or not popular? I'm a huge fan of Tal Bauer. Um, he writes uh, MM romance, so male male romance that is thriller and action based, and his books are just fantastic. I love them so much, and they just pull you in. And I mean, you're on a ride from beginning to end, and it's just a fantastic journey. And his writing style is, is something I hope to be close to one day. Um, so Tal Bauer is a big one, but some other influences, I grew up with reading a lot of Stephen King and Terry Brooks. So those are two genres outside of romance that I really enjoy is the horror thriller and fantasy. So those are kind of two other big influences in my writing styles. Okay. So Tell us about your books, you know, kind of go through them and, and tell listeners what they can expect when they read them and where to get them from. Absolutely. So I have two books out. Well, technically I have three books out right now. Um, one is the prequel to the fall trilogy, and it is called Before We Fall. And you can get that one on my website, which is artandcoots.com. Or you can get it on Amazon, but um, if you do go to my website, you can get it for free. <laughs> so a little bit of a, a, a perk there rather than purchasing it off of Amazon. But Before We Fall introduces you to Hannah and Gray, who are our main characters in the fall trilogy. And you get to learn more about them, who they are, and why they're in the situation that they find themselves in when we roll into book one. And it's short, sweet, a um, little bit of action, but it's really just setting up everything for book one, which is Fall Into Midnight. And it is written from Hannah and Gray's point of view. So it's a dual POV book and it is spicy. So there's a little bit of spice, I would say, like in the book world, maybe three to four chili peppers out of five, depending on how you rate your spice. <laughs> um, so it's a little spicy. There's some action. There's mafia drama. And it's pretty angsty. It is probably one of my favorite books that I've written. It, And I mean, it holds a special place in my heart because it is my first um, full novel that I've published. So it's, it's very special to me, but it is a gender fluid bouncer meets ER doctor. They have an instant attraction. And then Gray, our bouncer, finds out that Hannah, the ER doctor, has someone trying to kill her. And what they don't know is that that person is closer to them than they realize. So the book follows them through that journey. 
and ends on a cliffhanger, which I know some people love, some people hate. Um, but you can pick up book two, which has fallen to me, and continue reading. So you don't have to wait too long. It's already out. And it's told from Key and Marcus's perspective, who are two other characters that you meet in book one. And we follow Marcus as he goes on this vengeful journey to capture our protagonists, or sorry, our antagonists from book one. So he kind of takes matters into his own hands and is trying to essentially save everyone. He's on a one man mission to kind of save everyone from the trouble that they found themselves in, but ends up in trouble himself and key and gray and the rest of the team have to have to rescue him. So he doesn't go as planned. Um, and that book is out as well right now. And you can get both fall into midnight and fall into me on Amazon or my website you can also find it on, you know, like barnesandnobles.com, uh, like Walmart, I think, carries it. It's kind of everywhere. But um, I would encourage you, if you want a paperback version, to uh, buy it from my website because uh, you get a lot of goodies. <laughs> I throw in a lot of extras. Um, book three of that trilogy, We All Fall, is coming out later this year in November. And it concludes the plot from the first two books. And it's told from Luke and James's perspective. And you meet them also in book one. So it's three books, the same plot, all told from different perspectives. <laughs> um, and it's an MM romance thriller. So male, male romance. And it's all about kind of the recovery from what they've experienced. There's a lot of mental health representation, PTSD, um, depression, anxiety, and kind of how our characters are dealing with those um, experience, things that they've experienced in the past and in the present as they kind of deal the final blow to our antagonist from book one. So book three will be out in uh, November and it's available for pre-order right now. So those are, that is the fall trilogy. Okay. So, so besides that book coming out in November, uh, are there any other upcoming projects that you're working on that listeners need to be aware of? Um, yeah, I have a, it's a holiday special book, that novella that's coming out in December December 6th, I think, is the date that I've set for that one. And it is kind of my gift to readers of the fall trilogy. It's the bow on top of, of the trilogy. And it really um, is a little holiday extravaganza that involves the nightclub from book one, where all of our characters kind of met. And it's my happily ever after for um, Gray and Hannah. So that's coming out December 6th. It's also available for pre-order right now. And I'm currently working on my second book of poetry. Um, I write poems that are about love, loss, and grief. And am hoping to release another collection sometime next year. I'm kind of taking my time with it. Uh, and I'm trying to really put together a nice curated collection of, of poems before I release that next poetry book. Okay, so you threw out your website, artincoots.com. That was one of my questions. Close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if that was something I forgot to talk about that you would like to touch on, or any final thoughts you have for the listeners? Um, I would just like to say... Um, if you are thinking about writing or are interested in becoming an author or a writer, um, I would encourage you to explore that. Journaling is a great way to start and to kind of find your voice. That's how I started with writing. I would journal and kind of just free flow, I guess, write. And 
then I started coming up with story ideas and those kind of turned into my books. So I would encourage you to explore that if it's something you're interested in and to also um, find a writing community wherever you are or even online. There are great options out there and it's super motivational to be a part of those communities. So um, definitely check those out. And I hope um, that you read my books. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Go pick up Arden's books. Go to ArdenCoots.com. Check it out. Follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Jump on your favorite podcast app. Give us a review, a follow. Share this episode to as many people as possible once again. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, Curtis Jackson, 1978 at att.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening and supporting the show. And Arden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.